the greatest performances in UFC history. Obviously, we've seen a lot of iconic performances from iconic fighters, some legacy defining performances in the UFC. And I'm going to go through all of them and break them down, you know, break down some of the best ones. I tried to stick with title fights, but some of these aren't title fights. Some of the performances were too good. I couldn't do a list without involving some of these performances. But before we get into it, make sure to like, sub to all that YouTube shit. It really, really does help me out a ton. And we hit 3k yesterday. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the boys subbing. Starting off, there's only one way to start this off. There's only one way to start this off. It's with one man, the biggest superstar the UFC's ever seen, on probably the most pressurized fight we've ever seen inside the UFC. It's Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor against Eddie Alvarez. This one was probably for me the best performance in UFC history. I had to start it off right. I had to start it off with my top one. If we look at the circumstances going into this fight, it was Conor on his meteoric rise at 145. But people kind of saw that Jose Aldo KO and they were like, it's a great, it's a crazy, you know, KO. It's crazy that he got it done so early. But there's a lot of people that said, is it a fluke? You know what I mean? Was it kind of just like a lucky punch that he landed? Is he really that good? Is it too early for him to go up to 155? Because Eddie Alvarez was a dog, you know what I mean? Eddie Alvarez beat some really, really good fighters inside the UFC and he was a really, really good fighter. And if we look at now, like we've seen Volkanovski go 145 to 155 and he, you know, did well the first time, but the second time he struggled. And then we look at, you know, other people jumping up in division, trying to get double champ status. It's not an easy thing to do. And it was super, super irregular for back then. Obviously, BJ Penn got double champ status, but the first simultaneous double champ, that would have been Connor. And when this guy has pressure on his shoulders, I don't understand how he does it. When he has pressure on his shoulders, he gets even better. He just gets better and better and better and better. No matter how much pressure you put on his shoulders, the whole country on his back, the first simultaneous double champ inside the UFC, you know, the biggest superstar inside the UFC, everyone waiting to see if he's going to lose. And he went out and put on a flawless performance. It was a flawless striking performance. We saw it in the first round, just started tagging up Eddie Alvarez. He was just too fast, too clean. Eddie Alvarez then decided to try to switch up the game plan, try to take him down. Connor stuffed all of Eddie Alvarez's shots, beat him up on the feet. And by the end of the first round, start of the second round, we were just kind of like, holy shit, he's just a different level. It is a different level in class. It's something that we usually see when, you know, two prospects are coming up and we can see that one prospect is just that much better than the other. But to see it in champions, to see where we have one champion that goes up a weight class and it's just that much better than the next guy. He just puts on a performance where we look at it and we're like, wow, I don't know. I, I don't know who can beat that guy in the UFC right now. That's what he did to Eddie Alvarez. The combination that put him down, the accuracy, the timing, the speed, everything was perfect in it. We still see compilations, still see edits to this day of that combination that he landed on Eddie Alvarez. One of the best performances in UFC history, probably the best performance in UFC history. And if it's not that, it's going to be somewhere on this list, the one that you have. After that, we have John Jones and Daniel Cormier. We've gone from the greatest performance of all time to the greatest fighter of all time. John Jones against Daniel Cormier, specifically the second one. The first one was a really, really good performance. But the things that he was able to do to Daniel Cormier, where he was able to, you know, stuff all the shots, wrestle well with Daniel Cormier. There's some nice scrambles in there that he did well with and control him, control him on the feet. And the way that he set up that knockout was perfect. If you look at how he did it the whole time, bullying the body for the whole of the first round, bullying the body, you know, kicks to the body, punches to the body, anything, just trying to drain him a little bit, bit by bit by bit, and eventually get his hands to drop that little bit more. And it worked perfectly. It's why we talk about John Jones as the greatest of all time. Yes, his skill is unbelievable, but we've had a lot of skillful guys inside the UFC. Yes, you know, he does everything right. He's an athletic freak, his reach, everything. But it's his in-ring IQ, his in-octagon IQ that sets him apart from the rest. That's what makes him different. That's why people look at John Jones and they're like, wow, this guy is incredibly good. It's the same thing that we see in kind of, you know, every sport, his ability to audible, his ability to go on the fly and make plays. That's what he does. That's what he did against Daniel Cormier, where he changes up. He goes to the body, to the body, to the body. As soon as he sees that little tell from Daniel Cormier that, you know, his hands are dropping a little bit too low, he goes to the head. It was absolutely perfect. It was like as good of a performance as you can get. And Daniel Cormier, although he did hold his own in that fight, you can see the difference between the opponents. You know, Eddie Alvarez, don't get me wrong, was a great, great fighter, great fighter, but he's not Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier is a two-weight world champ, one of the best UFC fighters ever. And John Jones just went out there and, you know, stomped him. He just went out there, outthought him, beat him on the feet, beat him in the wrestling, even beat him on the mic. And, and we see Daniel Cormier talk about it. When Daniel Cormier was breaking down, you know, what happened in that fight, what happened in the second fight, the split second adjustments that John Jones have, the things that we don't even really see, the things that we can't even really comprehend. The fact that when he hit, you know, DC with that head kick and DC was a little bit just like, whoa, you know what I mean? Kind of spinning around, got the spins a little bit. And then he has the IQ 
to just go and kick out his legs to spin him again, to have him twirling even more, and then he falls over, and then the fight's over. It's that little adjustment where most people will go, ooh, I have him hurt, let me go in for the kill, you know, this is a big moment, this is the second fight, I'm going to get my redemption after the drug test, let me go in there and get this finish. John Jones takes that little split second and decides, no, I'm going to kick out his legs, so he'll spin him around and disorientate him even more. Iconic performance from, you know, the greatest of all time. That's kind of a performance that set his legacy in stone as the greatest of all time. To do that to a guy like Daniel Cormier, not once but twice, absolutely exceptional. After that, we probably have the greatest UFC fight of all time. And for this one, it's not one guy that had a crazy performance, but more the performance of both. Yes, Robbie Lawler did have a good performance in this, 100%. It's Robbie Lawler, Rory McDonald, by the way, if you, if you don't know the fight. I presume that you all know the fight. When I say the greatest fight of all time, there's only one fight that should pop into your mind. The pace that they set, the tempo that they set. I feel like this is what it would be like to, you know, get transported back into the ages where the Greeks had the gladiators. I feel like we quite literally watched a gladiator fight between these two guys where they both went at it for 25 minutes until somebody tapped out. And Rory McDonald may have tapped out. Yeah, he may have been finished by the end of it. But that's by no means a slide of Rory McDonald. He fought his heart out for the entire fight. Robbie Lawler had this busted up lip. His lip was like completely severed open. Rory McDonald's face looked like a fucking balloon. It was like a pinball. Bruises everywhere. Blood everywhere. These guys scrapped for as long as they could. Both put on iconic performances. Both put on, you know, a Hall of Fame fight. There's a reason why this fight's in the Hall of Fame. There's a reason why people still talk about this fight to this day. There's very few fights where it's not like an all-time great, where it's not a John Jones, a be but DC and Anderson Silva that we still talk about to this day and this is one of them after that we have a performance that we all knew was going to come up we all knew it was going to come up if I'm doing this list it's coming up and it rightfully deserves its spot this is the only thing that I think could displace Conor McGregor against Eddie Alvarez it's Cody Garbrandt against Dominic Cruz Cody Garbrandt versus Dominic Cruz was a fight that we kind of all went into it with Dominic Cruz as the goat at 135 he was pretty much cemented in that role nobody from Uriah Faber's team could beat them no Uriah Faber couldn't beat him either and it was like, how long can Dominic Cruz go for? He obviously had his run at WEC. He had his run inside the UFC, beating fighter after fighter after fighter after fighter. And Cody Garbrandt went in there and put on a show. Put on an absolute show. It was the best performance that we've seen from, you know, a debutante in a title fight. He went in there, game plan was perfect. Everything that Dominic Cruz did, Cody Garbrandt had a counter for. And for a guy in Dominic Cruz, who's, you know, an unorthodox striker, a difficult guy to deal with, a guy who, you know, it's very, very difficult to game plan for, to get sparring partners for, Cody Garbrandt made him look simple. He made him look like a simple striker that, you know, threw a one-two and that's it. He made a guy in Dominic Cruz that was a really, really good striker look like a legit amateur. Pop locking in between rounds, you know, he'd slip, slip, roll, then pop lock after. He just popped him with his jab, cracked him with a one, two, dropped Dominic Cruz. It was an all out masterful performance for 25 minutes. He dominated him for 25 minutes. It was the fight that made me a UFC fan. It's the fight, it's the reason why Cody Garbrandt still has so many fans to this day. To this day, he still has so many fans just because of that performance. No matter how downhill he goes, I'm always going to be a fan of Cody Garbrandt. I'm always going to be, you know, before even Connor, probably. There's Connor was the one that kind of, you know, introduced me to the concept of the UFC. But the guy that made me fall in love with the UFC, the guy that, you know, I watched the UFC for was Cody Garbrandt. One of the best performances, undoubtedly, inside UFC history. After that, we have one that goes a little bit further back. We have our first non-title fight in Anderson Silva against Forrest Griffin. This one was too good to not put in here. This one was too good not to put in here. This is kind of what cemented Anderson Silva as his role inside the Matrix. Him at 205 against Forrest Griffin. That was a good fighter. You know, Forrest Griffin was a good, good fighter going up against Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva had pretty much 100% striking accuracy in this fight. 100% striking accuracy. Do you know how crazy that is to go into a fight and not miss a single punch? to have every punch you throw land. And the thing is, Anderson Silva may have had 100% striking accuracy. It felt like watching it, the Forrest Griffin had 0% striking accuracy. His head movement, his defense was perfect. And it's not like he had that kind of Floyd Mayweather Philly shell, where you look at it and you're kind of like, okay, yeah, but you know, he's in a super, super defensive style. Anderson Silva, hands down, hands in his way, slipping, dodging, dipping away from punches, pretty much flawlessly. Barely even got clipped in that fight. And to talk about the knockout, the knockout was absolutely wild. I've talked about, you know, how much power Nganu and Pavlovich and Robles de España have because we see knockouts off their back foot. We see where they're off their back foot where they shouldn't have any leverage, you know, and they knock somebody out. That's what Anderson Silva did. Falling backwards, pop, just a right punch, perfect onto his chin. Perfectly onto his chin, perfect timing, perfect speed. And it wasn't even that hard of a punch. It just caught him so off guard that he was just done. 
He was done after that. He could not continue. Anderson Silva, that was the performance that cemented him as Neo. As you know, the guy that was in the Matrix, the guy that was impossible to hit, and one of the best strikers inside UFC history. He was already known as that. We already knew how good Anderson Silva was. But to move up to a new weight class and put on arguably his best performance ever, we've got it. We've got to just look at it and say that guy's different. That guy's something different. He's an absolute alien in terms of striking. For sure, one of the best performances inside UFC history and one of the most iconic fighters that did it. After that, we have Volkanovski against Max Holloway 3. This trilogy was super fun. Like the first fight, super close. You could have given it to Max. Second fight, another one that was super, super close. And then the third one, you're thinking yourself the same. You're like, okay, we're going to have another close fight. Could be a split decision here. We go into it and Volkanovski puts on a Volkanovski performance. The performance that kind of got Volkanovski all these pound for pound shouts. A performance that kind of immortalizes Volkanovski. Turns him into the legend that he is today inside mixed martial arts. When he went up against Holloway, who's a striker. Not only did he outstrike and outbox Max Holloway, but his game plan was absolutely perfect coming into it. The leg kicks. He made a guy in Max Holloway who is probably one of the best fighters of all time. A guy that, you know, on pound for pound list for a reason right now. A guy that if anybody else was champion at 145, he would give them absolute hell in a fight. And Volkanovski made him look easy. Volkanovski 50 45 him with ease. The leg kicks, the wrestling, outstriking a striker. It was kind of like watching a prime John Jones performance where John Jones was like, you're a good striker. OK, let's strike. You're a good wrestler. OK, let's wrestle. That's what Volkanovski did to Max Holloway. One of the best performances ever. And it's just the thing that he sealed it after the trilogy. It's the reason why, even though Max Holloway beat every single 145 pound contender that you could ever have. Dana White was still like, no, we're not making that fight. The last fight was such a beating. It was so bad. You know what I mean? It was such a bad beating. It was such a crazy one-sided fight. We can't make that fight again. Volkanovski, one of the greatest ever. I hope that, you know, he still gets remembered for those performances and not Islam Makacha, Vanilla Deporia, but time will only tell. After that, we have, you know, the man that started the list. We had to put him down here. It's Conor McGregor once more. Him against Jose Aldo. What a performance this was. Like when I talked about the pressure with the double champ, the pressure was way more with Jose Aldo. Way, way more with Jose Aldo. Imagine Ilya Teporia. If you're a newer fan, you can kind of see Ilya Teporia's shit talk against Volkanovski and how people were like, oh, he's going to get mean black like crazy if he loses this fight. Imagine that shit talk, but times 10, where they did a whole press conference tour around the world, in Dublin, in Brazil, everywhere. Conor McGregor, you know, every single chance that he got would go and torment Jose Aldo on TV shows, in the backstage rooms of the UFC, in Dublin, in Jose Aldo's home country, in Portuguese. Like, how badly would this have backfired? And bear in mind, you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, he must have been a lot going into this fight. Like, everybody must have known that he was going to win this fight if he's, you know, talking this much shit. Jose Aldo hadn't lost in nine years. In nine years, he hadn't lost. And Conor McGregor put all this pressure on himself. Put all this pressure saying, I'm going to knock him out in one practicing you know the knockout punch we've seen the drills of him practicing that knockout punch of him just getting it down to a t even the interview where he calls it out the night before and he says i saw his right hand twitching and if he throws that right hand it's going to be trouble for him and then he does it exactly as he said he would inside the first round the fastest ko inside ufc title fight history for a guy that has that much pressure on his shoulders it's absolutely wild. You can't deny that's one of the greatest performances ever seen inside, you know, fuck a cage, fuck a ring, inside combat sports. Never mind, never mind, you know, boxing, MMA, kickboxing, Muay Thai, in combat sports. After that, we have Rafael Dos Anjos against Anthony Pettis. This one's a little bit of a weird one, just because, like, it's a little bit, you might, it might not come to your head, spring to your head right away when you think about great performances. But Anthony Pettis was kind of, he wasn't at that Connor level of stardom, obviously. Very few people ever in their lives have ever been at that. But Anthony Pettis was, you know, this new contender that was coming up, that was meant to be the guy coming up on the rise. He went up against Rafael Dos Anjos and he just got smoked by him. He got smoked by him, 50-45. It was almost like that Volkanovski Holloway performance. But Pettis was a little bit more hyped up to beat Ordier. It was like if we saw Islam Makachev and Charles Oliveira and Charles just went in there and absolutely smoked him for five rounds. That's the kind of hype that Pettis was getting. And obviously he would gain the title at a later stage, but already a 50-45 him in one of the best performances we've seen inside the UFC in a performance that's kind of been lost in time that people don't talk about that much to this day, that people don't, you know, give him the credit that he deserves. So one of the most underrated performances inside UFC history and one of the best performances inside UFC history. After that, we have Khabib Nurmagomedov. I couldn't do a list without having Khabib somewhere on here. And there's a bunch of performances that you could have picked. For me, it's him against Justin Gaethje. That was the best Khabib we've ever seen in my eyes. 
where Khabib went out there and he was able to scrap with Justin Gaethje for a little bit, but he was able to take him down at will and maul Justin Gaethje. And we still see Justin Gaethje now, years later, as a guy at 155, that you need to watch out for Justin. Justin Gaethje's probably next in line for a title shot, considering that Islam doesn't want to fight Charles Oliveira. You know, the BMF for a reason. He's a scary, scary guy. Crazy punching power, great calf kicks, a great wrestler. And Khabib went in there and made him look shit. He went in there and made him look shit. On the feet, looked good. And in the wrestling, smothered him. In true Khabib style, went out there, smothered him. After two rounds, you know, went out there, got the choke, and it was all over. It was all done. This list couldn't not have a Khabib performance on it, so I picked that one. If you think there's another one that's better, do let me know. And then finally, I had this guy on the list losing, so I had to have him on the list for some of his winning performances as well. It's Max Holloway against not only Calvin Cater, but also Brian Ortega. I had to put both on this list. The Calvin Cater one, you know, this list is remiss without that. This list, like, you cannot acknowledge a list of the greatest performances of all time that doesn't have Holloway versus Calvin Cater on it. How many striking records do we still see to this day that are, that are you know, upheld by Max Holloway because of this fight? You know, you have strikes landed, significant strikes landed, strike accuracy, all of these different records that Max Holloway holds because he beat the shit out of Calvin Cater so bad. He beat him up so badly. Like it was just strike after strike after strike after strike. Calvin Cater's face seeping with blood all the way through. I don't know how his corner didn't throw in the towel in like round two, round three, when they were like, holy fuck, he's getting beat up. You know what I mean? Max Holloway wasn't even really getting touched. It wasn't like an all out scrap like Robbie Lawler against Rory McDonald. Max Holloway wasn't even really getting touched. He was just, you know, putting on a striking masterclass where Calvin Cater couldn't hit him. And Max Holloway, anything he threw was connecting with Calvin Cater's chin anything that he threw he could throw a jab and he could throw a jab from the other side of the octagon and it would reach across and clip him right on the chin he did everything perfect his combination punching was perfect his defense was perfect there's nothing he could do wrong in that fight and he deserves to be on the list because of that and then we look at brian ortega too brian ortega dangerous guy dangerous submissions not bad on the feet and he's teaching brian ortega mid-fight he's teaching him how to block a one two and i don't know how brian ortega saw the final bell on that one that one was a beating too where Brian Ortega was just getting smoked. You, you just couldn't live with Max Holloway on the feet. He just couldn't do it. And if you look at these performances and then what Volkanovski did to him, it makes that even more impressive because you see how good Max Holloway is. You see how talented on the feet he is. That is the greatest performances in UFC history. Make sure to like, sub, dot, dot, YouTube channel. I will catch all your boys tomorrow. Peace.